G'day, this is Guardian Oz from Guardian Oz Gaming. Um, I'm in my uh, super flat creative world and I have just done some, uh, actually a lot of testing on this particular train layout and track widths and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm actually planning to do two cars, so this is a linkage between the two. Um, the reason I have two here is to do with how the parallelogram uh, function works um, so what it will do is it'll force the the, uh, the bogies to start to line up with each other under pressure I'll explain what that means in a second now uh, the other thing I've done is I've used a empty gas engine to create torque on those bars as well which helps it uh, straighten up so what I'll do is I'll just cruise around here a little bit slower and you will also see that the corners um, I've actually changed the geometry now uh, I've actually found a, a good combo that works really quite good um, the, from a driving point of view, the only thing I need to worry about is the actual outside edge of the corners. The inside rail is to um, just provide um, the force to keep it on track. So if we go into this corner, the reason why we're getting a lot of movement there, I'm actually one block wider than, it sh than the straight should be. And this is, um, but this gives you an idea of it actually wanders around a fair way, <clears throat> and with that wandering. Um, it also means there's less friction, less force, and it is actually not a bad, uh, given the fact that I'm not using any uh, wedges or any of those sort of stuff. It is actually pure block corners. The size and scale seems to be about right, uh, and they're actually pretty easy to build because I can just import an inner rail and an outer rail and uh, get the track down. So here's where I was explaining with the widths. Um, if you look down right next to my tyre, that's the size that I will build in survival. So it's only one block wider than the car. And then when we're in the packing station, we'll squeeze right up onto the rails like this red section. And uh, hopefully next time you see this, um, I'll have my survival one up and going. Thanks very much. G'day, this is Guardian Eyes. Welcome to the packing station in survival. Um, this is where that prototype that I've made has actually come to. So. We're looking at two uh, cars connected by the pipe in the middle, and we're able to carry um, two lots of 10. So we're looking at 20 um, bales, and we're actually going to build it uh, with the rail set how it is here with this post. I don't actually know how tall they are. Are they 16? So they're 3 three blocks taller than 16 so I'll make my calculation work out that so I didn't know that um, and then what we've done is we've come down that's the post there I'm using suspension as an air block to allow the, uh, the train to pass through there is a lot of details on this train and I'll just go through some of them very quickly I'll get up the top so the lead suspension is actually softer than the tail suspension which is on max and the reason for that is when we go into a corner, we don't want to jostle very hard straight away. We want to actually start to turn um, gently and then um, let the the, uh, the tail wheel take most of the load. And as soon as the tail wheel is inside the corner, then the, the, the uh, well, actually, if we're looking at this side, the corner would be around to the left. Um, gas engine speed at the moment. Oh, uh, I'm still trying to work out what is the sweet spot. Um, the problem we have is because this is um, unloaded, this car becomes uh, very bouncy with the wheels because of um, how they are. So with that bounciness that was causing me a problem, I've added in some gas engines to become torque controls. So the engine at the back is the drive engine going to the wheels and the other engine here is for torque control. So the one that it's connecting to is about helping the trailers straighten out after a corner. I haven't actually done any track yet. I've just just been trying to get this to just drive along nice and smooth. And um, we, we actually see the pistons at the front moving outwards, which is going to be a problem. Um, but it all settles down nice and we get a good speed. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the prototype coming along here in the packing station. So I've backed up, give a better shot for everybody. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to go with. Um, I'm planning to manually load at the moment, just because 
um, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're going to get to. Um, and, and what we're doing is looking at the passing um, clearances. So you can see the main post for the um, packing crates passing the post for the rail. That's another thing you've got to consider is what is this passing, um, what width and how, how clearly is it going to work for me. Um, the other reason to have it as a twin rail, it's got more stability. Um, I don't have to try and grip around the, the, the rail. Um, it means that my corners can be faster as well, as you saw on the start of this video in my testing world. Um, and yeah, overall, it just makes the building easier. Um, that's what it's all about, is we've got a lot of track to lay. It needs to be easy to build. And um, for me, on this particular packing station, we've got some... Um, nice hills and rocks and some uh, nice obstacles to get past uh, which is going to mean uh, the track isn't going to be just straight boring 190 degree bend and we're up it's going to take a bit of effort to get up there uh, that's why this one's been chosen um, and the other one is proximity to water if i'm going to set up some uh, automated uh, farms so um yeah i hope you enjoy sorry it's a little bit slideshowy um this big flat thing on the ground is not doing us any assistance at all. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.